Hi everyone, welcome to Cash Walks. We're off to the Waitomo Caves today to have a good look around the caves and also find the geocaches in the area. Come with us. After a two and a half hour drive from Auckland, we arrived in the lovely Waikato countryside to find this ancient world 30 million years in the making. We passed through the small township of Waitomo and headed around the corner to our first stop, the main Waitomo Glowworm Caves. The caves are formed in limestone laid down under the sea millions of years ago. We parked our car and headed over to the ticket office. With our tickets paid for, we headed to the cave's entrance. The no photography icon at the entrance was a problem, but we have obtained footage of glowworms so that you can see what we saw here. Here you take a boat ride through the glowworm grotto. These glowworms are a species of gnat endemic to New Zealand. In its larval stage, it produces blue-green bioluminescence. It's just so beautiful. The boat goes back for another load of passengers. You exit the cave, then walk through some lovely native bush. Then we headed up for an ice cream. We showed the girls photos of guides and visitors in the early 20th century. Then it was on to find our first geocache of the day. Unfortunately it was a did not find. Reading the logs it looks like it's in the second largest tree. Pity we didn't widen the search. Then an easier one not far away. We moved off a little to sign the log, unobserved. Later we headed to Ruakuri Cave. The name Ruakuri, or two dogs, was created when wild dogs were discovered, making their home in the cave's entrance. We were a small group, only one other person with us. Photography is allowed here when the guide says so. The cave entrance was used by Māori as an urupa or burial site. As it's a sacred area, a new spiral entrance was built some distance away. Ruakuri is the only wheelchair accessible cave in the southern hemisphere. Here you can see wonderful stalactites hanging down from the ceiling and stalagmites coming up from the floor. A stalactite's average growth rate is 0.13 millimetres or 0.0051 inches a year, so they take many centuries to grow this large. Here Lynn is filming a hole that runs through the middle of this large stalactite. 
It's through this tube that water travels from above. With each drop, it deposits another calcite ring. If the tube blocks, water begins to flow over the outside, depositing more calcite, creating a cone-shaped stalactite. The same water drops that fall from the tip of a stalactite deposit more calcite on the floor below, eventually resulting in a rounded or cone-shaped stalagmite. Stalactites have to hang on tight so they don't fall, and the stalagmites have to be mighty strong and push up from the floor. There are beautiful translucent calcite curtain formations in the form of a wavy or folded sheet hanging from the wall of the cave. There are glowworms in this cave too, not as showy, but much closer to you. A glowworm uses silk threads with sticky droplets to capture prey. There is a large fossil shell on the rock here, and a moa bone. Here are extinct flightless moas being chased by a gigantic cast eagle, the largest eagle known to have existed. It is thought that the panicky moa fell down holes like these through the roof and into the cave. There were some amazing textures in the cave walls here. Here we followed Maori tradition and we washed away the spirits of the cave before walking up the spiral ramp to exit. And it was off for another geocaching adventure. Well that brings us to the end of this cache walk. Those caves were really amazing yeah. and the kids loved it. Mm. Um, and we did manage to find at least one geocache. Yep. So thanks for watching. And don't forget to go geocaching. <laughs>